Web search requires lots of machines. The internet itself requires lots of machines to serve all the different sites that you visit, but the process of crawling the entire web, building up search indexes, and then having the machines available to quickly and accurately respond to search queries requires large numbers of machines. Last time I looked, I think Google operates millions of machines all over the world. And a lot of those machines are located, are located in what's called data centers. So data centers are specially designed structures that are created to hold thousands of machines. And there are actually data centers pretty close by, but today we're just gonna look at kind of a little mini data center that's located right in our own department. So this is one of the machine rooms that we have here at the UBCSE department. And uh, let's go inside and take a look. Got to use my card to get in. OK, so let me show you a typical rack that you might find in a data center. So here's a, this is referred to as a rack. So you can see that it's a vertical structure. And inside this rack, are lots of small computers. So each one of these computers is, each one of these vertical things right here uh, with a label on it says Dell, this is each, these are each a server. And these are known as one U servers. So racks have a typical um, style in terms of holding a certain, uh, there's a certain set size for a server in a rack. You can see there's an empty space here. Um, this is one U or one unit. You can also get like this, for example, this computer is a two U unit. So it's actually twice as tall. And they're sold that way so that I can buy a server from anywhere and I can install it into this rack. So this is the front side of the rack. This is showing me, you know, there's these computers don't have monitors. They're not really user facing. They're running servers that we're using to do different things in the department. So this, you know, there's no way to, you know, interact with these computers, this way you'd have to log in remotely in order to do things with them. Um, so I can put lots of them in a rack. You can see there's some different configurations here. Uh, this one has a lot of uh, disk drives, so maybe it's a storage type of machine. Uh, this one doesn't have, seem to have as many disk drives. I have no idea what these machines are for, uh, but this is a pretty standard setup. So data centers around the world would be these huge buildings that would just be filled with rack after rack after rack after rack of um, holding, you know, hundreds or hundreds of thousands of computers. Let's go back and look at the other end of the rack. So over here you can kind of see the business side of the rack and this is where things get pretty complicated and messy because every one of these computers has an internet connection. Uh, these are all, looks like they're all ethernet here. Um, and they also need power. And actually, that's probably one of the most interesting aspects of data center design. So why is it so loud in here? Um, if we look up here, that's what's making all the noise. So there's a fan there, and that's a cooling unit, and there's another one over there, and there are actually other fans below the floor here that are circulating air constantly. Because computers, particularly when they're packed really tightly together like this, they generate a lot of heat. And so one of the interesting aspects of data center design is trying to make data centers energy efficient by trying to reduce the cooling costs. So there's a certain amount of energy that just goes into powering the machines, and then there's extra energy that you have to spend on the cooling. And after decades and decades, major internet companies have gotten very clever and very good at designing data centers in ways that limit the cooling costs as much as possible. One of the ways that you can do that, if you're clever, is you can decide where to put your data center. So nearby here um, in the Niagara region, we actually have some data centers that are run by Yahoo. So why would Yahoo decide to put data centers here? Well, there's a couple of interesting reasons. One is we have Niagara Falls nearby, and so we have a possible source of relatively cheap power that could be used to power all the computers in this area. The second reason, as you've probably heard, is that Buffalo is not necessarily a place that gets really warm for long periods of time. So if the surrounding environment is cold or cool large parts of the year, it costs less to cool the computers and the equipment inside those data centers than it would at other places. I just read that Facebook opened up a new data center, I think it's in Finland, probably for the same reasons. It's cold, 
climate is good, that limits the cost of power and to cool those computers. So data center, thousands of computers located close by. A typical data center might have multiple tenants, so it might have computers from a bunch of different companies. Um, and the challenges in designing data centers are you know, really bound up in providing power, keeping the machines cool, and then also getting enough internet connections into the data center so that all the machines can have fast connections.